So welcome, my name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And in today's episode, I thought I'd take some time while my custom built solar array over here has the paint drying and explain how to wire up solar panels. It gets confusing to a lot of people and I had several of y'all ask to please include this when y'all heard that I was building a solar array. So what we're gonna answer today, what is parallel, what is wiring panels in series, and what is wiring panels in series parallel? That's where you take a couple of different sets. What this is ultimately doing is we are either changing the voltage here or the amperage or both. So first and foremost, follow your manufacturer's recommendations, whether you're using a solar charger or a portable power station like this EcoFlow Delta Pro, they're all gonna have limitations on how much voltage, wattage, amperage, or a combination of both that they can handle. This particular unit right here can take up to 1600 watts of solar, but then it also tells you no more than 150 volts, and it's 15 amps if I remember correctly. So what we're really wanting to pay attention to more than anything is voltage, and amperage. So in order to meet a certain voltage and amperage range, you may have to wire your panels differently, either parallel series or a combination of both. So let's discuss it on these few panels that I have right here. Of course, the sun just went behind the clouds, but we're gonna try to get something out of these panels. We're gonna wire these up and I'm gonna show you on this little nifty device that I have right here that'll tell us the actual voltage and amperage going to this unit. And I'm gonna show you how different wiring configurations will change what this unit sees. So if I can get this to focus, today I am using the Renogy RNG 100D panels. These are 100 watt solar panels. You can see they have lots of different ratings on the back side. What we're really looking at is the open circuit voltage and short circuit voltage. You'll notice that it also has an operating voltage and current. That's most likely what we're going to be seeing here. But just know that open circuit, not making an actual connection and providing, that can be up to the rated voltage and amperage that you're seeing right there. So it's best to use those numbers in the calculation of all your panels added together before you hook up to whatever controller that you have. All right, so if we were to take our little meter here and hook it up to the side that says source, we have a source and a load. Load's obviously the load that you're gonna put on it with a unit. Let's go ahead and connect that. We should see some similar voltages to what this is showing. Sadly, not enough sun right now to show the wattage. So now with this single panel flipped over, we should read something. And if you take a peek right down here, 21.92 volts. And that is with us being nice and cloudy and no sun really being out. But we can see that we're working and we're already within the recommended voltage range. So again, keep in mind there's no sun out right now, but I just connected this to my Delta Pro. So now we're putting a load on this system. You'll see voltages have changed. We're showing a little bit of wattage and a little bit of amperage up there, almost one amp. We're not gonna get proper factory readings until the sun is out completely, but I just wanted to show y'all how actually hooking up to a load does change some things. And you can see we're staying right around 22 volts. Okay, so that's a nice and simple hookup. A single panel doesn't get any easier than that. What you see on the back is what you should be getting. So what happens when we connect two panels together? There's two different ways you can do this. Either that series that we were talking about or the parallel. Let's show you what happens when we do both of those. Okay, so now there is two ways we can hook this up. Let's first go with the parallel route. Now keep in mind, these are a little over 20 volt panels rated right around five amps. That's in full direct sunlight, good to go. So just for the ease of this demonstration, let's just call them 20 volts and five amps. That keeps things nice and rounded off for this test. So if we do what's called parallel, that's where you actually hook a positive to a positive and a negative to a negative. What this does is that changes your amperage. So now we have two five amp panels. We should go to 10 amps and direct full sunlight, but our voltage of 20 volts stays exactly the same. So whenever you do parallel, positives to positives, negatives to negatives, what you're changing is amperage, not voltage. All right, so what I have purchased here, these are called Y branch connectors. As you can see, they'll accept two cables in, one cable out. They have a combiner built right into them. So good, well, we won't have the sun for long here. So if I take the two labeled positives and hook up, and then I take the two negatives, well, again, we've just paralleled the system and we have just increased our amperage, but we've kept our voltage the same. Let's see if I can quickly get these over before I lose the sun, I see more clouds coming. All right, so again, just so we're clear, both positives, one from each panel, coming to this Y branch connector and just making one positive. Both negatives, 
why I branch together, coming out with one negative. Let's see what we're showing. So as you can see, we're still low on the voltage. You know, it's always gonna change based on the sun. We're heading right back towards 20 volts. That did not change. You can see our amperage is quite a bit higher. But what I wanted to show you was voltage did not change. That never does whenever you parallel. All right, so now let's do series. Let's disconnect all this and do the exact opposite. Let's put some positives and negatives together. That is perfectly normal to do with a system like this. Okay, no point in flipping these back over, but you can see I have two wires, a positive and negative, coming from each panel. So check this out. Now what we'll do is take a positive right here from one panel, a negative from one panel, plug them together. This is called series. Now we are left with one positive, one negative. This is the same way you up your voltage for batteries. For example, if you have 24 volt system on heavy equipment, a trolling motor for a boat, you would actually hook positive and negative on two separate batteries to up the voltage. So now what we can expect to happen, our voltage is going to double, but our amperage will stay the same. So if we were in full sunlight, we should go up to around 40 plus volts and our amperage will stay at five volts because we did not parallel. So check that out, hopefully you can see it. Now we are showing 42 volts and we're back down less than an amp. But let's focus on that voltage, it's changed now. All right, so did you follow that? Very nice and simple. A positive and negative from two different panels connected together. You're left of the positive and negative. You have just increased, you've just doubled your voltage. That series, you did not touch your amperage. Whatever one panel is rated, that's what you're gonna get. Now, whenever you start talking bigger systems, like this device can take up to 1600 watts of panels. So that is a lot of combinations of panels depending on how you wanna get up too close to the maximum wattage that this will take but again today we're focused on the voltage and amperage that's just as important in my mind so what that means is we may have to do an odd combination you have to sit down and do some basic math on how you want to increase the voltage up to a certain range we can't go over 150 volts and once you reach that well guess what we can then increase the amperage because that does not change voltage and we can bump the amperage up to 15 amps. Let me explain. Let's wire in four panels right now using the same basic principles that we just used and alter things to work for what we need. Okay, so to keep from dragging this out and boring you, you can see I got four panels set up all with their individual positive and negative. So say for example, if I was to hook all four positives together, I had the right number of branch adapters to do that. They make these with four inputs, one output. And I hooked all the negatives together. That is again considered parallel even though we have all four panels. So because we hooked all positives and negatives together and we paralleled four five amp panels, we would have 20 amps going to this unit over here. Well guess what? That's already over the rated amperage. This can only handle up to 15 amps. That's why we need a combination of some series. So let's do what they called series parallel. So if I were to take this unit right here and hook the positive and negative together like we just done, now go look, I'm left with a positive and negative. Do the same thing over here, a positive and negative hooked together. Now I am left with a positive and negative. So due to the length of my wires, I'm just gonna have to move these panels on top of each other, but we should still see what we need to see. All right, I hate to keep repeating myself, but I wanna get the point across here. Two different panels, positive and negative hooked together. Two different panels, one panel positive, one panel negative. Same thing over here. Two panels, positive and negative, hooked together. One panel's positive, one panel's negative. So now we have two sets of panels in series. Then let's parallel them back together. So by putting two in series, we did not change the amperage. There's five amps here, but we did double the voltage. So we're a little over 40 volts here. Same thing here, five amps, a little over 40 volts. So now if we take the negative off of one panel and hook up, negative off of the other. So now I just took the negative off of the one set that's series, negative off the other set that's series, hooked them together. This is us paralleling. This is called series back to parallel. Same thing over here, two positives from two different sets of series panels. So what we've essentially just done by seriesing these two, we left the amperage at five amps that was rated on the sticker, and we've just doubled the voltage to a little over 40 volts. Same thing right here, five amps, a little over 40 volts. By combining the positive and negatives back together, 
we have just paralleled. And remember what parallel does? It increases the amperage, but does not change the voltage. So now we've taken the two five amp setups, we're running them to 10 amps, but we're keeping the voltage the same. So now we have kept the voltage under what's recommended on this unit, and we've just brought the amperage back down because we started with seriesing, and we're still below the 15 amps rated capacity on this unit. Okay, hopefully y'all can see that I'm having to hold one of these panels up by hand, but look at there. A little over 40 volts. If we were getting more sun, we'd probably be closer to 48 plus volts based off of what the manufacturer claims. So we got a little bit of sun coming out now. You can see the wattage flying up. There goes the amperage. Now the Delta Pro just kicked on, it's charging. It sees that there is enough wattage to do that. And you can see the voltage dropped once we put a load on this. That's why you get those open circuit and closed circuit voltage ratings on the backside. All right, we got the sun peeking out again. We're flying on up. This is the first time. Look how quickly that wattage and amperage is flying up. I don't even have these panels aimed correctly and we're already well over 300 watts out of 320 right there, 330, 340. And we can only get up to 400 watts posing. You can see we're stopping at 10 amps, just barely over. So that's really good. That means we're wired correctly. See our voltage is still saying well below 40 volts and amps is not wanting to exceed 10. And I am shocked 340, 350 watts right there. And these panels are just aimed out here in the yard and the sun is over that direction. That's already looking good. Don't worry, on the next episode, we're gonna run some actual tests on these Renogy panels and see if they can produce close to what they claim. And we'll be wiring in a whole lot more of them. Okay, well, hopefully that made sense. As you've just seen right there, we had multiple 20 volt panels, which should be producing over 80 volts. We were able to cut it down to 40 volts, but we have five amp panels. We were able to bring up to 10 amps by doing that combination. So whenever you're gonna set up and design your solar system, whether it's got 16 panels or 30 panels, whatever it may be, or 300 watt panels, what you wanna do is pull those manufacturer specs and know that anytime positive and negatives go together, your amperage, just go ahead and double it every time you make a connection. Anytime you series and hook a positive and negative together, well, now you've just increased your voltage and left your amperage along. It's really easy when you do that. And the cool thing is you can break it up into sets, whether it's three sets of two, four sets of two, or two sets of eight, whatever combination that you need to do. But if you're gonna be doing series, and obviously you're gonna to have to have at least two panels to do that. Now, the good news is if that still didn't make sense, hopefully it did with that little demonstration right there. One of the next videos we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing a much larger solar array over here. I'm building that over the next few days and we're going to have to do series parallel there in order to make sure I stay underneath the recommended voltage for this unit because with the amount of panels that I have I would be 250 plus volts and this is rated for 150 but we're going to be able to bring it down to close to the recommended voltage and only be at 10 amps not maxing out the 15 amps of this unit. Now check the specs again on your panels you're going with and whatever charge controller you're using. You may have a on the wall DIY solar system that has completely different specs than this Delta Pro here. You may be using a smaller portable power station than this that has a much smaller solar charge controller and can only handle maybe 50 volts or five or 10 amps. So check that out before you go out and purchase all of your panels to make sure you're getting what you need. If you have a question about something, drop a comment. That's what it's there for. And we'll catch you on the next episode where we have a very exciting storm ready solar array build coming unlike anything you've ever seen, all DIY. We'll catch you on the next video.